Oh, shoot, I forgot my notes. Oh, I think I know who it is. Let's see if I can guess without notes. Uh, our next speaker is Craig Carmichael. It is the Car Hybridizing Project. Did I get it right? That's it. Yes! Yes! Oh, here he comes. Hi. Uh, about uh, two and a half years ago, I started a little project to make an electric motor for a car. So, read from my notes here. Uh, the project goal was is uh, an accessory car motor system, an add-on that mounts on the outside of a car wheel to turn any car into essentially a plug-in hybrid that you can run on either electricity or when the batteries run down, you can just turn the engine on and run it on gas like usual. I call this the electric hubcap system. Uh, theoretically, uh, one motor on one wheel should give enough propulsion for a car. Uh, I think it might be a little slow on the Malahat going up, but uh, if, you, if one isn't good enough for you, you can always put on two because your car has four wheels. And the components of the system are first there's a, an axial flux pancake shaped motor which is made from a trailer axle and two car disc brake rotor discs and some magnets and coils that you make up. So it's really the only probably the only five plus horsepower motor that you could make yourself. And uh, there's a matching motor controller that's uh, an easy home electronics project if anybody's into that. There's a matching <coughs> mechanical torque converter and that's the, the part I'm afraid that I'm still working on. And then there's a flexible coupling with some pins that hooks up the whole system to the car wheel in such a manner that the car wheel can go up and down over bumps and the motor will just twist instead of uh, wrecking your car's handling. And then there's a couple of controls at the front of the car, a rheostat under the gas pedal and then reverse forward and off switch. And the whole motor system is about 45 pounds and 36 volts for electrical safety. It's not like all those 144, 300 volt things that but it'll probably electrocute themselves on if they do their own work. <laughs> also, to go along with that, uh, the car that obviously has to run off batteries. And I've been working on new chemistry batteries. I've learned a lot of chemistry in the last two and a half years since I started. And I think I have uh, a new uh, chemistry, nickel manganese alkaline batteries, that's uh, probably got uh, better energy density than anything out there and it'll also be way cheaper than lithium as well as a higher energy. And uh, so what's done so far, the motor works great, the motor controller works great, and the uh, nickel manganese battery, I've got a lot of techniques and stuff going and the sort of settled on the chemistry, but uh, they still need some development. Um, the mechanical torque converter, this is because a car wheel turns very slowly compared to an electric motor. Even this big electric motor, which is only about 2,000 RPM or less, uh, requires gearing down to your car wheel, which even at 100 kilometers an hour with a 13-inch wheel is only going 1,000 RPM on, on the highway at 100 kilometers an hour. So the mechanical torque converter was originally invented in 1923, and the only problem I have with that is that uh, the layout of that one re won't fit on a wheel-mounted motor, so I'm stuck with inventing a new one that fits. And that's, uh, I think I have a, one that'll work now, but I have yet to put it together. And the last time, the last couple of times I thought that, I put them together and they haven't had enough power. One had horrible vibration, things like that. And uh, I'd like to, oh, and uh, another uh, feature of this, and I guess this ties into what Matthew Barker was saying earlier. 
problem that we face is not a lack of solutions, but a means to implement them. Uh, you know, there's no big incentive for uh, big oil and the car companies and that whole block to make things that to give us freedom and independence from oil. And uh, so that's part of what my whole system is about, a big part. I've made, I'm making it open technology. There's no patents. And uh, I've done all the work for free and all that. And uh, in the potential of the system, that's because of the way I've done it and made everything so simple to make that it doesn't require you know, a, a big factory that costs a hundred million dollars to set up. You can make the motors at home. You'll be able to make batteries at home, and maybe they're not really practical as home projects. Uh, but they could. Any motor shop repair shop in town here would have no trouble making the motors. And there's motor repair shops in every city in North America, and uh, they can do it with virtually no setup costs. And. Uh, this is the mustard seed uh, to empower people everywhere to start ter economically turning existing cars into plug-in hybrids. And there's uh, about 250 million of those cars in North America. And uh, there's, so there's fantastic uh, small business potential there too, since the big business isn't doing it to. Uh, make motors, to make motor controllers, to make batteries, and to install systems in people's cars, because obviously not everyone's going to do it themselves. And so that's what it's all about, is opening up the whole area, uh, economical hybridizing of cars that people own or leased, and the companies are going to take back as soon as they can. So, um, of course, can hardly wait myself to get that mechanical <laughs> torque converter working. <laughs> 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 <laughs>